Hey guys, uh, this is Ella Smith at the Chattanooga Times Free Press, and we are celebrating Hemp History Week. Um, Hemp History Week, is that correct? That is. Yep. And so we have yep. some folks here, they're going to introduce themselves, and they brought us some uh, hemp products. So if you're like, well, what is hemp? Uh, isn't that illegal? No, it's actually not. It's not psychotrophic or psychoactive, or what's the word? Psychoactive. Psychoactive. So this, these are all things just made out of, out of uh, hemp, like you can get, you've heard of hemp rope. Um, and you can actually do a bunch of other cool stuff like tea, so we'll get into it. But first, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Ashley Clayton, and I'm just a local hemp enthusiast advocate and want to raise public awareness about hemp and all the amazing products that it can make. Okay, my name's, uh, I'm known as Coach Freddie, and um, I inspire people to do things that inspire them. Build an inspiring business, create an inspiring lifestyle beyond your wildest dreams. And I've joined the uh, hemp industry uh, to support uh, industrial hemp. Um, and uh, to add on to what you said, uh, industrial hemp is part of the cannabis plant that doesn't qualify to be marijuana. Yeah, it doesn't have the, uh, the, the THC. THC. It has very low yeah. THC. And uh, so uh, we make all these products out of that, that uh, uh, industrial hemp. That's the byproducts that, the, uh, that we use. All right, and I'm Sam Young. I'm the owner of Green's Eco Build and Design. We're Chattanooga's healthy home improvement store. Uh, we focus on non-toxic, American-made building materials, renewable products, natural products, and obviously in that whole thought process, uh, industrial hemp is a 100% perfect fit. Um, myself and Ashley and Coach Freddie and some other folks uh, like Lauren and Emily and Celeste have been back at Green's over the last two months working on planning this whole week out. Hemp History Week, and we're really, really excited to be a part of it and uh, very excited to share all the possibilities for hemp in Chattanooga. So uh, let's talk about, because right now we probably got uh, regular people, consumers watching, um, and, and you do some building supply stuff. Yeah. Let's talk about the consumer stuff. So what is a, is a person who goes out and shops at whatever, Dollar General, Walmart, uh, you know, buying clothes, what can I get that's made out of hemp, and, and why would I want to get that? Well, I'm wearing a hemp shirt, Okay. so it can be very fashionable, durable, it's antimicrobial, okay. um, so there's a lot of hemp clothing that people could buy. Um, hemp foods, there's hemp seed, hemp seed oil, lots of different recipes out there, very healthy, complete protein. And I'm um, drinking hemp tea, right? Hemp tea, and oh. you can also make hemp coffee. Oh, that's really good. And um, it's... It's got a sweetness to it. Yeah, add like some that. honey to it. Oh, okay. We are in the well, South. You. Everybody likes their tea sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it mimics green tea as far as the health properties. So it's um, hmm. so food and clothing. So it's got some antioxidants in it. Mm -hmm. well, that's very cool. So I mean, why um, you've got a million things, and I want to get into this stuff too. But but talk about a little bit, you know. There's a stigma that a lot of people are trying to kind of banish about hemp because it's it, mm -hmm. it's it shares some uh, lineage with with uh, marijuana, weed, whatever you want to call it, which is illegal. But you've got a different sort of branch of that family tree, and you get hemp, and hemp is actually really useful. So talk a little bit about how you how you're doing that education process, or you know what's. You know, how, how that's going. Well, I'm going to let Coach Freddie pick yeah. this one up because he's driving around America doing just that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, last year I start, I, I have an, uh, a podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio called the I Hemp Revolution. And you can go on there, subscribe to it, and drive, there's about 150 some uh, episodes on there already. And every place I go, I interview and I talk to, just have conversations like we're having right here yeah. about people who are already in the industry or want to get into the industry from attorneys to farmers and I'm driving around and I last year I started the I Hemp Revolution Roadshow which is me driving around in my 1966 Austin Healey 3000 which is a really Mark cool three, car oh, yeah, everybody in the outside. newsroom which is one floor below us was like <laughs> looking at the window like what there's a cool car you guys have to come see <laughs> yeah. so all these reporters like you know we're like whoa their noses were this were, just in yeah <laughs> it's, it's a really cool British car you guys got to see it yeah, and uh, so uh, then that was last year. I did, drove around for uh, three months uh, in, in this it's general area here from Pennsylvania to South Carolina. And this year I added a trailer on there so I can have sponsors, um, you know, that, that are in the industry already. 
uh, and I'll be on the road for uh, five months. So what do you say to people, you know, in this, in this educational tour that you're that you're doing? If somebody comes up and says, hemp, can you sell that? Is that legal? Like, tell me, what's your what's and your And the first thing I start out with is, like I said before, that industrial hemp, uh, which I call iHemp, yeah. uh, doesn't qualify to be marijuana because there's very little THC in it. So what do you do with it? Well, my shirt is made out of hemp. My pants are made out of hemp. My shoes are made out of hemp. I have a little pouch here that I keep my uh, iPhone in out of hemp. But what else can you do? Everything in your home that's made out of plastic can be made out of hemp. Okay. Uh, this pen right here is made out of hemp. So that's maybe uh, this a healthier is made alternative. Out of hemp. Well, that's cool. uh, so all wow. those things can be made out of hemp, um, but the shirt that I'm wearing, it's imported, either the fabric is imported from China or Europe, and we're paying money to China, Europe, connect Canada, for all these products, but our farmers aren't allowed to grow it. So they can grow it there. They can grow it there. We can import it. Yeah. yeah, but we can't grow it. There's something mm -hmm. wrong with that picture. And they go, wow, yeah. And actually, uh, Henry Ford, because I have a car out there, and uh, made a car out of hemp in 1941, filled mm -hmm. it with hemp oil. Well, the big oil companies, Standard Oil at that time, didn't like it. The steel industry didn't like it. They wrote, they lobbied the Congress and everything to pass all the laws. This is mm -hmm. how the laws were changed. So we're out there saying, hey, let's take this off the, the Schedule One narcotic list. Yeah. I mean, and right now you need a permit to grow it because they're getting around the law. You have to go through, the, each state writes their own laws and goes through the uh, universities. Mm -hmm. And so they have all these rules. You have to have a permit. You have to have this and that and, and so forth. And well, you don't have to really have a permit to grow potatoes or tomatoes. Yeah. This is a this is a plant, and so we want to educate people. And it's a really useful plant. It's a Very it's got useful. a lot of. The, I guess the fibers must be really uh, this strong. Is the, because this the is the strongest this is, natural fiber in demand. Because look at this. This yeah. is this yeah. is hemp. Yeah, and, and this this is the inside herd, with the inside of the stalk called herd, and you can mi mix this with lime and water. Yeah, and make what they call hemp creep. And that's that. And you can build houses. They're already building houses out of it. Um, and quite a few, and there's a few in, in uh, Colorado and North Carolina that are 1,500 to 3,000 square feet, really sustainable businesses. And I'd um, like to add on to um, not only just universities, um, Tennessee has, is allowing uh, through the Department of Agriculture to get licensed to grow hemp, which has happened, they're in their third season now. And we will have farmers at our event this Saturday at the Edney. Come on out. From cool, in the innovation two to district. Six, fifth floor, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna talk about Tennessee hemp farming, law, food. Health and wellness. So yeah. people, so just to be clear, people can or cannot farm. If I wanna go start a farm, I can grow hemp right now, or no? Yes, you have okay. to apply with the Tennessee Department of agriculture okay. and it's two hundred and fifty dollars for a license oh, um, and two dollars an $2 acre dollars an acre oh so you pay okay mm -hmm. and they do test it for THC um, so you have to grow a certain type that's not yeah, you have to get a certified general. seed um, approved through the DEA um, to grow it so do they have they have seeds you can plant that are not flowering and creating a T, the THC variant yes. okay. it's below it has to be below 0.3 percent THC okay. by law and that was actually signed by President Obama in 2014, the U.S. Farm Bill. And that opened up the door for all the states to have um, their own hemp law. Okay. Tennessee actually has a really good hemp law. We do, and it's I got a little document of Ooh, Public House is. Bill number 916, and it's signed into law by Bill Haslam at the end there. Hey, look at that. Let's let's zoom in on there. There you go. Bam. There you go. Was that May 25th, 2014? Is that what it says? 13th. Dang. Close enough. <laughs> so you, there it is. There's the law, folks. It's legal in Tennessee. Just follow the rules. Follow the so rules. Submit your application and grow industrial hemp. And yeah. so talking about industrial, and I don't want to cut anybody, but but you've got some. These, what are these things? You, you can you can actually in your home, right? If yep. you, you've got some healthy alternatives here yep. to some of the more toxic substances yep. that we typically use in our home. Yep. And if you got kids or something like that, whatever. So talk about how hemp can be something that you can bring into your home and actually create a healthier environment. Yeah, so the alternative, uh, the traditional alternative that exists today are petrochemically based products that are either penetrating into wood or are topical. 
um, like polyurethane or oil finishes. Um, most of those products have a large square footage surface area on the can dedicated to keep out of reach of children yeah. and caution this thing causes cancer, do not use in enclosed areas, blah, blah, blah. This says biodegradable, non-toxic. Yep. So this is a, uh, these are two different types of oil, and actually this is a third different type of oil. Okay. So this is just hemp seed pressed and refined to a certain extent that it can be used as a concrete finish, a butcher block countertop oh. sealer, hardwood flooring sealer. Uh, you can put it on your raised beds if you want to seal the wood. Oh, I do of, want to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I didn't. I give I'm, you a good price. I'm growing stuff. <laughs> I mean, I've got a couple of raised beds so you, and I, and I built them out of wood and I didn't want to put the poison on there because yeah. I plan on eating this stuff. Yeah. So it's just sitting there in the elements, the sun's beating down on yeah. it, you know, and the wood's starting to bow a little bit. And I was like, man, it's too bad there's not something you can do that doesn't kill you. Yep. So you're telling me there is, in fact, something I can do that doesn't kill me. And you can buy it right here in Chattanooga That's it. between the boathouse and Rock Creek, Greens, Eco oh. Build, and Design. Okay. It's so simple. So uh, as far as the house goes, you know, most products that are made out of hemp are just going to be better for the environment, better for the economy once we start getting it grown here and processed here. And then from a chemical off-gassing standpoint, going to be better for you. So everything that's shown here are things that either Greens actively sells or things that we're excited to promote. So how many of y'all out there have ever been to the Chattanooga Zoo? How many of y'all know that the animals lay on bedding? Well, this yeah. is hemp herd that comes from Kentucky and they process it in Kentucky, and this is going to be an alternative to the bedding that all the animals sleep on. So it's soft, and it's antimicrobial, and it absorbs smell and moisture a lot better than traditional pine straw. Mm -hmm. um, another cool thing that y'all might see is, um, you know, this, so this hemp plastic pen and this hemp card holder were actually 3D printed. What? And, yep. mind if I steal this? Oh, please, quick? yeah. So this is a spool of industrial hemp plastic so like Coach Freddie was saying, okay, uh, anything plastic you can make out of industrial hemp, and it's and just it's biodegradable. Well, and it's how biodegradable. Does that even work? I don't understand. You can go from a plant to a plastic mm -hmm. using the cellulose. The cellulose. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. The same thing is they they take the oil, and they make all kind of stuff out of it. So it's anything that you can make out of out of oil, you can make out of hemp. So why not grow it here in Tennessee? Why not process it here in Tennessee? Why not create uh, industries that make all these products right here in Tennessee, locally? Well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, well, let me put on my business reporter hat for a sec. I used to be a business reporter. I mean, oh, okay. what's the, what do I make if I'm a farmer and I'm doing this? Like, is there enough of a market, you think? For How much chance? did we well, import of goods? $680 million worth of hemp goods last really? year into the America? From China, from Canada? From everywhere that's not America. Okay. Yep. So you're saying that, so there's a six hundred eighty million dollar market of people buying this stuff. And that's just the small part. And yeah. then only a few states, I assume, like Tennessee, even with all the permitting and the two hundred fifty dollars. Thirty three, thirty three states now. Oh, thirty three states. Legislation. Yes. Are many people taking advantage of that though? They are. Um, okay. The problem is, is the infrastructure. Yeah. You know, when you're starting a new in industry, you need processors, you need manufacturers, you need um, yeah. Yeah. all these that's different not place, right? pieces it's, that we're trying to get the education out there so if there are any investors out there that want to invest in the hemp industry I mean the sky's the limit because so growing it isn't the problem it's after you harvest it okay what now you, I need a factory where I can turn it into this right. where I can make delicious tea which is really exactly. good by the way uh, or, yeah you, you know, really like that didn't you or these uh, this plastic material which I'm sure has to be you know there's probably some processing that goes into that yeah but those types of facilities you're telling me are still primarily that infrastructure is over Seas, and as we're having layoffs in manufacturing and in industry, this is something that can replace a lot of that, yeah. and it's it's not toxic. Yeah. It's sustainable. Some of it's biodegradable, like plastic, especially. Yeah. I mean, how many plastic is plastic pollution in our oceans? Yeah. And um, this is a little piece of carpet. Here it is. That this people can't see it. As you guys know, we have a huge carpet industry here. We do, and this Dalton. is actually from Dalton. This yeah. is a hundred percent wool on okay. the top here. So this is, you know, you got some tan and some brown sheeps walking around, they get shaved and then they get turned into wool carpet. But the backing is what's most interesting. It is a hemp and cotton blend. Okay. So this is a local carpet with natural wool and potentially local cotton and potentially local hemp as well. That's very cool. Well, let, let's take the, uh, uh, the building industry alone. Yeah. Now, all of them, they're developing materials, press board and boards and everything and they're in the process of developing now. 
but what if you all the building around here can be built out of hemp yeah so millions and millions and millions of acres of hemp have to be grown every year to supply that industry mm -hmm. and that's a constant flow of raw materials to that industry and we're just not at that volume right now yeah you know we we, we jump up a, a for joy when a farmer says he's going to part uh you know plant 10 acres or 100 acres that's that's nothing compared to what this industry needs yeah. yeah so and then you need that you know it's sort of a chicken or the egg thing you need enough people growing it to make yeah. it profitable for investors to build a plant that then processes it and so you know which which comes but first it, but right? it's long-term thinking yeah yes so people right now are interested in, in short-term monies and short-term thinking you if you think long term if you get in now in the long term like 5 10 15 20 years from now you're going to be amazed at what this industry is doing so if I was putting a house, or let's say renovating a house right now, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm sick of all this toxic paint. My, I have a baby girl, she's uh, seven months old, and everything goes into her mouth. Yeah. You guys are familiar with this phenomenon? Mm -hmm. Anything, <laughs> this, anything on this table would go right into her mouth. Uh, so the house is filled with things that should not be in her mouth. So if I was, if I'm renovating my house, what are some things that I could do? Talk to me about, is that insulation? Insulation. Okay, so I could, I could redo my insulation. Redo mm -hmm. your insulation. And is that pretty soundproof? Like if she's, you know, oh, yeah. if we're watching TV, we don't want to wake her up, I could, that, that works. Right. Yep. Yeah. Does a really good job of sound attenuation. Um, same thing if you refinish your floors. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. as far as I've seen, that's where babies spend a lot of time. I, on they the do. Floor. Yeah. So finishing with either the clear penetrating oil, oil wax, or just the raw hemp oil would be a really good solution because it's in there, she's going to be touching it, it's going to be absorbing into her skin a little bit, and right. then who knows with a traditional product how long that toxic chemical off-gassing has happened. Yeah. So if she could be, you know, crawling around and licking the floors if she wanted to. And there would be <laughs> which no, she does. Yeah, which there would be no problem. <laughs> Floor goes in her mouth, just like yeah. everything else. And then, you know, if you've got a deck outside yep. or you've got a, if you live in a log cabin, there's a new product out called Hemp Shield, which we're hoping will have a manufacturing facility here in East Tennessee in the oh, next great. two years. Yep. Um, that's a really good thing. It's mm -hmm. the same thing, just a wood finish. And then uh, at the same yeah. time, um, oh. I would say, you know, not, I mean, aside from the building materials, hemp diapers, hemp yep. blankets, hemp couch, your whole, you know, your your walls could be made out of hempcrete. There is a hemp oil paint. That's what this is. That is hempcrete. Yes. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. is a, that is basically wow. the, that would be the interior face of the wall. It'd be plaster. The whole okay. wall would be twelve inches thick and would be that material. And then on the outside would also be the plaster. Okay. Uh, there was a test recently done. Um, it was like an age test or strength test based in time, and this is what um, what Tim told me yesterday. 17,000 year potential for a properly constructed hempcrete wall. Really? As, as moisture and air flows through it, it only makes the bond between the lime and the hemp shiv stronger. So it's... And after years and years, a hundred years and so, it starts to turn into petrified wood. Ah, mm -hmm. so, so it's that's what happened. You know, not right away, but over years and years. And, and uh, mm -hmm. what it, this is, is termites will not... What? No. They don't want it? Pest resistant. Termites will not Why? bother it. You can put a torch on Because this there. tea is delicious. The termites are missing out. <laughs> oh, they're missing out. Yeah. But you can put an actual torch on here and it won't burn. Yeah, you can see that on YouTube. How yeah, is that achieved? On, what, yeah. what natural magic is this? Natural properties of industrial hemp. Really? And, and the, you can go up to 30 inches for more insulation if you're building way up in the north and a lot of snow yeah. and cold and everything else. It's, uh, you know, it keeps the inside warm while the outside is real cold or vice versa. It keeps it really cool in the summertime, you know. So, you know, it has a lot of a lot of good properties to it. And, uh, you know, why not uh, let the farmers grow and make better money and, you know, not pollute and not grow GMO crops and pesticides because we're being poisoned by all this bug spray that they're uh, spraying the, the food with. Remind me how much uh, pesticide and herbicide and fertilizer we need for industrial hemp. Uh, let me see, I think it's zero. <laughs> well, it does require fertilizer, but okay. no pesticides. No pesticides, no yeah. real and herbicides. A very, it's a very and special fertilizer. It's not the kind that they use now. And, and, it's, and, and in some cases, you don't need any fertilizer. And it's only a 90 day growing season, yeah. so yep. <laughs> I have more. <laughs> <laughs> we need some, we need some yeah. <laughs> you can grow probably two crops here uh, a year on the same plot uh, in here, 
goes further south, three. Uh, I'm, I am my world headquarters in the Virgin Islands. They could possibly grow for <laughs> seasons down there. But you have to allow time to, to, uh, to, to harvest and replant. So at least three three crops out of the same acre. So you can be fairly prolific in terms of... Oh, yeah. Now, is there a... Um, I know we used to grow a lot of cotton here in the south, and that, of course, depletes the uh, the soil well, pretty cotton badly. Cotton is one of the most... Uh, they use the most pesticides Yeah. In any crop out there. And it uses twice as much water. Because you got boll weevils and stuff you got to watch yep. out for. But you're telling me hemp, the insects don't come and... and uh, you, you have to watch out to a certain extent, uh, but there's ways around that okay. without getting into toxic chemicals. Yeah. Well, we do have some, uh, and we can come back to any of this stuff. And if I'm forgetting to ask you guys something, just chime in. But we have uh, some people asking questions. So I thought, right. let's uh, answer their questions. Um, uh, and, and some are just comments, and you guys can chime in or whatever. This one is a comment from Al Sims. He says, one of my ancestors was a hemp farmer and rope mill awesome. operator in Middle Tennessee before the 1860s. So I can only presume that was before they kind of made it illegal. Exactly. Yes. Um, well, I, I can comment on that. Uh, in 1937, they had the, the, the tax act that they, they, they put so much tax on it, the farmers couldn't just make it unprofitable. Yeah. Yeah. So World War II broke out, and we were getting our, our hemp to make rope from Manila. Okay, that's why from the, Manila, yeah, from the Philippines. So the Japanese captured the Philippines, cut off our supplies. So the government that said you cannot grow hemp anymore said you got to grow hemp because <laughs> you have all these big warships, and if you don't have, you got to have rope attack, on a ship. Yeah, if you guys if you don't, what are you going to do with them? They're just going to. You can't come into port. Yeah. So tune into YouTube and look at yeah. hemp. For victory, yeah. Hemp for victory, yeah. On YouTube, Great. and I'll tell you about that. So this was like a little promotional film or yeah. something. That, well, I yeah, love those. It's well, yeah. beautiful. Well, by, those the, are, yeah. by our government, and they Super denied hemp. they denied yeah. that that film <laughs> until somebody went down in the archives and found that film. How embarrassing! <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No, we didn't do this. No, it's a found, somebody found it. Now it's out for everybody. Oh, I mean, well, I, I think whenever I talk to people in um, <laughs> older generations and I start talking about yeah. hemp, like me. <laughs> like He's Fred. talking about me again. Uh, people that don't don't understand what hemp is, and then I start explaining it a little bit, and then the sort of bells start ringing, and they say, "Oh, like hemp rope, yeah, from my childhood," and that's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. Once, um, once people understand, uh, I haven't found anybody that that says, "Oh, no, no, no." Once they understand a little bit, I says, "Don't take my word." There's all kind of things out there yeah. that they can go YouTube and. And, and find out more information. Well, I just think it's fascinating when people chime in and say, yeah, I was part of that, or I knew, and um, and, and actually, on in that same vein, you were talking about hemp rope. Um, Harry Ufalusi, and I apologize if I'm butchering <laughs> your name, uh, he says, I use hemp rope, twine, and string to make period-correct Civil War artillery implements such as lead ropes, lanyards for firing cannon, mm -hmm. pro lunges, again, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, uh, to pull artillery pieces and a myriad of other similar things, and he lives right here in Hickson. So that's awesome. That's so you've cool. got somebody who's there. Kind you of go. That's fantastic. Doing the stuff. Come down and, and yeah. visit. Yeah, uh, yeah. Visit Sam. At Fair some point, let me know what size spools you need, what size hemp rope. I'd love to find a way to source it for you, and if not, find a way to have it grown and made in Tennessee for you. Well, come down and see us Saturday. Yeah, we need to give a major major plug. So Saturday at the Edney Innovation Center that's right. downtown from two o'clock to ten o'clock. Yep. We've got an amazing marketplace and lecture series, and our whole focus is these five different topics, history, farming, and law, actually four topics, history, farming, law, food, health mm -hmm. and wellness, and around the home. Is that all? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about how hemp plugs into all those and, and makes me. all of those and better. And, 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 and Coach Freddie's going to be there. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's the MC. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I am. That's and right. we'll have a networking event on the rooftop of the Edney starting at 7. Yeah. Yeah. There may or may not be hemp beer there. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> and as may you guys know, I'm a strong proponent of rooftop uh, establishments. I think it's, it's, a important, it's for, cool. important for colleagues to get together yeah. And, yeah. and network and share ideas on a roof with beer. So that'll maybe be happening. Yeah, but there will be a lot of products to buy. Um, so if you want to come buy products, fantastic, do that. And then there's going to be a lot of awesome information. And most importantly from us, just getting the word out about hemp, y'all yeah. learning, yeah. dispelling all the myths and the stigmas that you were talking about before, yeah. and then Coach Freddie just walking around inspiring people to do all the things that inspire them. 
That's all that matters. Yeah. Now, yeah. we've got one of the phenomenons of Facebook Live uh, is that people kind of will start watching halfway through, and we explained what hemp was at the beginning, but for people who are just, we have a question here from Rindy Davis saying, what is hemp? What the heck are you guys talking about? So, <laughs> so hemp is what? It's hemp is uh, part of the cannabis plant that doesn't qualify to be marijuana because it has very, very little THC. According to the government, 0.3%. If you're smoking marijuana, uh, like in Colorado, it's legal, and they grow uh, marijuana in Colorado legally, and they're they're growing 25 to 30 percent THC to satisfy their customers. They are so, breeding these plants yes, specifically exactly. for the THC content, whereas hemp producers are breeding them specifically for to men. eliminate the yeah. THC content exactly. and make it good for these types of things, right. all these various you products. Twenty five thousand. Products. Yeah. None of which get you high. Yeah. 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 Don't smoke it. And, 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 and people say, can you smoke my shirt? I say, yeah, but you're not going to get high. You're not going to like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So really, what is hemp? Hemp is everything and potentially could be everything from food, fuel, fiber, building materials, clothing, plastics, tea, plastics, health yeah. nutrients, um, everything. Yeah. So thank you, Randy. Um, and then Derek Clayton, uh, he's a nice compliment for you guys. He says, uh, these folks represent the pioneers for an industry that will be so beneficial to the economic and sustainability practices that will make our state infinitely better and well suited to adapt to the future. Tennessee is a great state and hemp will make it even better. Gosh, Derek, and, uh, what a wow. genius. Hey, thank you. I'm, I'm wow. a pioneer. I'm, I'm yeah. finally, I finally made it. Yeah, right. <laughs> what a I'm out of here. Compliment. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So, um, so thank you guys for your uh, your comments, yeah, questions, you things like that. Um, a thank lot you. of you are watching. A lot of you are sharing. So uh, we really appreciate it. And people have more questions. You know, what are some good resources? You know, maybe they can make it to the Edney uh, yeah. thing Saturday at two. You said yes. Saturday at two. Maybe they can't. So if they can't, what do they? How do they find out more? Um, I the I Have Revolution podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. That's okay. my podcast. Um, People can con contact me. I have a website called coachfreddy.com. Um, you can email me at ihemp at coachfreddy.com. So, um, if people I'll, want to get into the trade, you have some legal, you know, uh, like yeah, state I, by state. Because some people watch from Georgia, North Carolina, oh, yeah, yeah, Alabama. Exactly. And yeah. there's different yeah. rules depending on what state you're Georgia in. Does, I'm going to Georgia does state. not have any hemp legislation right now. So, you got to um, come to Tennessee if you want to grow Tennessee it. Tennessee and North Carolina and so, Kentucky. So Kentucky does. Because mm -hmm. uh, we were saying Kentucky's. something is from Kentucky that we were. Yes, talking the, about earlier. the hemp that's grown and processed to make the bedding and the hemp that's grown and processed to make the 3D printer spool. It's all just north of us. So, yep. uh, so yeah. basically they're taking, because tobacco farming has taken a hit in yeah. Tennessee and Kentucky and North Carolina, and they basically, the farmers want to tr transition to hemp. Yeah, so, and grow something that's, that's healthy for people and not harmful to people. Right. Um, that's just well, <laughs> it's funny, it's like the reading your mind, because there's a question here uh, from Stephen Davis. He says, my wife and I are wanting to start growing hemp. Any beginner advice? Uh, I would say... If you live in Chattanooga or nearby, um, tomorrow night at Green Spaces at 7 p.m. is the Tennessee Hemp Industry Association bi-monthly meeting. Um, that's a great place to start. There's a lot of farmers there. There's a lot of people that have been actively lobbying Congress for you know broad government, federal government legalization of industrial hemp. Um, so again, kind of playing on the previous question is the TNHIA is a really good place to reach out to for some starter information or just some research. Uh, they've got a lot of facts gathered about what a hemp is and what it's not, but mostly what hemp is and what it potentially could be. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to grow, um, if you're available to come tomorrow night, uh, Green Spaces at 7 o'clock. And that's on Hemp Main Street. Street, East Main Street, next to Need Loves, basically, yeah. where the bakery is there, or Flying Squirrel. Yep, in that general vicinity. Yeah. Um, and then also, um, if you simply go to uh, the Tennessee State Government website and search Industrial Hemp, they've got a great page that talks about legislation. It's got PDF documents of all the laws and uh, applications for next year. Great information on the, the state uh, website. And we yeah. will have um, farmers come and talk, having a Q&A at 2 o'clock, starting at 2 o'clock at the Edney 5th floor. Mm -hmm. 
So if anybody's interested in growing, it'd be a great time to come. It's Hear free. from other people who are doing it, which yes. is yes. for me, it's like I can read all the stuff in the world, but what I really want to do is say, all right, what are the pitfalls? Right. Like, what do I need to watch out for? How do yep. I need to like take care of it in the best way? Because you can always learn through mistakes, but these people have already made all those mistakes, right? right? So why yeah. not just go ahead and yep. jump they're, into they're it? They're learning too. Yeah. Uh, where yeah. Everybody's learning. Everyone's learning. Yeah, and yeah. even if people have been growing it for four years, three or four years now, they're still learning. And it's, it's a learning process. Mm -hmm. And just uh, if you're from outside the state, you know, just look up uh, HIA, Hemp Industries Association. There's probably a chapter in there or somebody that in the state uh, has a small organization. So mm -hmm. uh, reach out to those uh, organizations so because they're, they're vital. So what's holding Georgia back? Like why don't they, or what's what's the deal? They just don't want to do it? There are, there are hemp advocates in Georgia yeah. that's trying to get the legislation passed. I'm not sure what the issues are. I do know there's a lot of cotton and timber in Georgia. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know if those industries feel threatened yeah. by uh, the hemp potential because... Um, exactly. Hemp so, does have the potential It does to, do a lot of things here. Uh, I mean, we're looking at building products, you know, that... You know, wood, and, and look, my house is made out of wood, and it's fine. It's not really falling down, but, you know, that lumber, you know, you're, you're dealing with wood that's sometimes treated, and, you know, it's it's got its own problems, but, um, you know, this could replace that in some ways, right? Especially with termite yeah, issue. Yeah, got to have your aero exterminator guy come by, and that's expensive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. There you go. So, yeah, so there, there, so there could be some competition there, you're saying. So yeah. the existing, But also a lot of collaboration potential, yes. too, because, I mean, this is not entirely, this is not 100% hemp. There's a little bit of corn, PLA, plastic in there. This backing and the good majority of all hemp yeah. fabric has cotton in it as well. And that's kind of the nice thing is when you find two industries that potentially could be rivals, but then can also kind of yeah. have a new yeah. innovation era mm -hmm. within and, and and teamwork and collaborate. This is amazing to me because I covered carpet uh, for the paper for, yeah. for many years, and you know, it's, again, it's an enormous, enormous industry down there, and it's just cool that you can find a way to to work that into such a ubiquitous yeah. product. Mm -hmm. That's um, you know that could be. Uh, now, what do they normally use? They use uh, like a poly something. Yeah, or it's a, um, some kind of plastic. polyester plastic. Yeah. yeah. So typically, you're getting you know it's it's basically a plastic backing. And, and so you can do, and what are the benefits if I get my carpet or my rug maybe with this with this hemp instead of the, the typical plastic, is that? Um, I would say uh, basically the natural factor is that, you know, if you wanted to ever throw that rug out in the woods and let it biodegrade, you could. Yeah. Um, you don't have the small particulate um, or chemical emissions that uh, petrochemicals traditionally do have. Um, and I, I would think there's a little bit more um, anti-micro, anti Anti-microbility, that's not really a so word, but... I, I you, can't say it yet. If you spill yeah, something, I just if you spill, you know, a drink or something like that, and you wipe it up, you're not going to get as much mold or whatever, is what you're saying. Or, mm, or, potentially, or, I mean, that's more of a topical issue, yeah. and the hemp here is on the back. Yeah. So, I think it's just more of a durability and a natural factor. Cool. Yeah, and uh, uh, Mercedes uh, and BMW are using uh, hemp... Um, inside the panels because it's stronger and lighter weight really so they're already using that but they're over in europe and uh, the farmers over there can grow enough to supply if you try to get this into uh, a major manufacturer for like that like auto they want supply chains that they can rely on for years yeah. and years and we're just not there right we've now. Gotta, we've got to get that started. So we will get there. Oh, we will. Yeah. We'll get there. We're fighting hard for Especially it. Especially in Tennessee, you got a lot of car, car companies yeah. here. Oh, yeah. VW. Yeah. 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 Innovation. <laughs> we've got Kia, of course, down in uh, in Georgia, yeah. and Mercedes in Alabama. we got uh, Nissan somewhere nearby, right? BMW. Yeah, Nissan's yeah. out in uh, Middle West Tennessee. Yeah. and then, That's uh, innovation that excites right there. Nissan oh. needs to get on board with that. BMW in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and I think there's a GM plant in Spring Hill. So we have Spring a lot of I auto manufacturers I visited that when I had it, uh, a Saturn. Yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah they shut Saturn down. I like they had the plastic doors that you could run a shopping exactly. cart into. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. I bought one. We had it. 1995. Yeah, those things were great. Um, well, uh, I'm I'm really excited about the potential. I think this is it's really neat to see. Anytime there's new products entering the market, I think it's it's awesome. It's it's generally good for the consumer. Um, and, and you know, we talk about oh, the lumber industry. Oh, well, it, that that may be. But it may threaten them, but that ultimately drives prices down for the for the customer when there's competition. When you have a monopoly, 
it, you didn't generally pay more for stuff. So, I mean, if you're, it would help really for anybody building a home, right? Yeah. I mean, just even if you're not even going to use any hemp whatsoever, but if you, but if other people are, it brings the prices down yeah. for everybody, correct? Yeah, and that's that's the challenge right now. I mean, for instance, can I steal this real quick? With the the hemp insulation, uh, this is not even price competitive in America at all. Like, no one's going to buy this for. Fifteen dollars a square foot. Right. No one's going to do that because it's got to come in on a boat yeah. and to get transported. I back. need to insulate a wall. Okay, cool. That's going to be four hundred dollars. Right. Doesn't make sense. So yeah. once people start realizing they can do this, once the industry develops, once once people start actually making a decision with their dollar and saying, "I'm voting for this product. I'm buying it, and I'm mm -hmm. saying this is mine." That's when the industry starts to churn. Um, and I think just the potential for hemp with insulation and with building materials. Um, Hempcrete's not for everybody. Yeah. Some people do want their two by four vinyl sided box that came off a printout from the internet, and that's fine. But there's some people that understand high performance, healthy homes, and hemp's role in that. Um, so it's it's going to be you know whoever wants what they want. And the good news is with 25,000 potential products, um, you know you don't have to vote on vote with your dollar on building materials. You can just buy hemp seeds or hemp oil or hemp tea. Yeah, which is quite good. Yeah. So the same um, plant can be for seeds, can be for fiber, for clothes, and for hemp herbs. So and then the leaves for tea. And, and we even got into the CBD, that's a whole other topic. Well, we did, <laughs> we did a thing on CBD a little while back, the oil, yeah. uh, of mm -hmm. course. Right. Uh, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, we can. I just, I mean, I'm just saying it's another addition to what yeah. the plant can do. It's a People use it for, you know, relaxation or whatever. Right. Um, um, I think that's it's actually probably the least of what they use CBD yeah. oil for. Yeah, um, the number one thing that struck me when I learned about CBD was its effect and impact and benefit for uh, some young children that had major, major epilepsy. That's right. And the traditional pharmaceutical route just about exhausted. Um, nothing would work until CBD was introduced, and then at that point, their epilepsy was just cured to an extent way beyond what traditional pharmaceuticals could do. And then there's anxiety and depression mm -hmm. and nausea and sleep issues. Inflammation. Inflammation, uh, fibromyalgia. Sore joints, arthritis. Chronic pain. Yeah. And then. And there's a CBD place, or there's two, I think. Aren't there two there's CBD? A, there's several. Here in town, yeah. <laughs> we'll actually have some CBD vendors at our event mm -hmm. on oh, Saturday cool. at the end. Yeah. So, and and I'm glad you mentioned that. Stephen Davis, uh, the guy who wants to start growing hemp, says, uh, please give addresses again for tomorrow. The Edney building is at the corner of 11th and Market. Um, it's uh, right across from uh, Patton Towers. So uh, anyway, so you can park. There's lots of parking around there, and uh, that's, and that's the, Saturday. That's not Saturday for at tomorrow. two. Tomorrow is at Green Spaces. Tomorrow, Green Spaces is on East Main Street. So uh, you go to Market to East Main, and it's sort of a couple of blocks down. Um, it's you can't miss it. It says Green Spaces on there, but it's it's sort of in the built-up, sort of urban-looking part of East. I believe Main it Street. is 63 East Main yeah. Street. Yeah, I don't have the zip code on me. <laughs> but it's near the Flying Squirrel, if you know where that is, or Need Loves Bakery. If you see Need Loves Bakery, you're pretty much there. Um, anyway, so that's uh, those are some of the events going on here for Hemp Week. Here are some of the products. Um, again, if you have uh, more questions, you can uh, talk to Coach here. Yep. Um, send him an email to come to come to one of these events we just described, um, or leave a, another question in the comments. You guys share this thing and, and go. If anybody has any questions, feel free to answer them. Uh, it's not going to hurt my feelings. Uh, this will be up for a little while, so uh, well, this will be up for a long while actually. So uh, feel free to feel free to chime in, and, and if you have any questions, you can ask. Anything else you guys want to say? Think happy. Yeah. Think happy thoughts. Think happy thoughts. <laughs> happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. thoughts. Oh, <laughs> thoughts. And have a happy day. Have a happy day. <laughs> like it. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Take care.